What I would like to discuss is the actual recovery that takes place in an individual struggling from an eating disorder or an addiction or pretty much any brain ailment. And that is to understand that the brain itself is broken, that there are changes that have occurred not just because of the drugs or behaviors, but also because of the stress one's under or because of malnutrition. Oftentimes it could be genetic defects or any host of things that need to be repaired. The nice thing is, is that long ago we thought that once the brain is broken, there's no new nerve cells. Now, over the last 10 years, and especially because of brain imaging, we've discovered that cells can be regenerated. So we have a process we call neurogenesis, where new cells develop, and we also have a process called neuroplasticity, where this is where the nerve kind of rewires itself in the brain and there's new connections between other cells, and this is called synaptogenesis. And then there are factors that we can measure now in the brain that we call neurotrophic factors, and these are sort of like miracle growth of the brain. These are basically fertilizer that makes it happen better. But for all this to happen, there's really about three major phases. The first one most people are familiar with. The other two, I think I want to edify a little bit. The first one is that this change has to be stimulated. That's basically what therapy does. It basically stimulates those cells to change. And the talk therapy and experiential therapy and even the um, types of therapies that are just kind of non-talk but kind of resonance or attunement where kind of you kind of just sense through mirror imaging of what is being communicated. That, that is important but it won't happen if there is not proper nutrition. And when there is nutrition, all these changes are more likely to happen. So when we talk about nutrition, it's pretty basic, but the person has to do that particular process. So they have to be concerned with energy, and where does that energy come from? What most people don't know, and I think it's paramount that they begin to realize that the most important nutrient for brain recovery is glucose. Now the name for glucose is sugar. So, so many people think that sugar is a bad or negative, but sugar is sugar whether it comes from a carrot or an apple or a piece of bread or a candy bar or ice cream. It all turns into glucose and that's what fuels the brain. And what's key is, is to make sure that there's always enough glucose when that brain decides to heal. There's also other elements that are extremely important that you help in terms of the flexibility of the brain. That means so it can respond to neurotransmitters, chemicals, and this takes into account things like fatty acids, primarily omega-3 fatty acids. And then because there's so much healing going on, a person needs to have antioxidants because the very healing process produces free radicals that can destroy what's being repaired, and antioxidants help to neutralize that and prevent that destruction. It's also important to have proper hydration. Even the smallest amount of decrease in fluid intake can be paramount in terms of brain functioning. It's also important to think about making sure all the nutrients are available at the same time. Uh, nutritionists a lot of times don't address the need for vitamins and minerals, but even if there's a deficiency of one of these, it can cause major problems in terms of the healing of the brain. So it's a good idea to kind of supplement a good vitamin and mineral supplement. And then there's also things that can cause further destruction of the brain. Uh, once a person quits their drug of choice or behavior, they still might practice things like drinking coffee. Now, coffee can be helpful, but usually for people in a recovery state, caffeine can be detrimental. So it's wise that they stay off of that. Now, all of this only takes place, this healing only takes place during a certain part of your day. And when it takes place is during sleep. Not just any portion of sleep, but basically what we call restorative or slow-wave sleep. So another key ingredient for healing to happen is to have proper amount of stage 3 and 4 sleep, proper amount of nutrients, and then basically have proper psychotherapy to help the healing process. Other ingredients that are also very useful are things like exercise. Exercise helps increase this miracle growth. We actually can measure brain-derived neurotrophic factor that increases the likelihood that the brain will hear in context with psychotherapy, good nutrition, and sleep. One of the most important things that we're finding is helpful in terms of recovery is to understand how mindfulness works. This is sort of a process where you actually change the way you think. Most people say, I wish I could stop this behavior, but I keep doing it, I keep compulsively doing it. And when you learn mindfulness and believe that a better technique is available, but you just can't change the way you think, mindfulness is a way to reach that goal. 
and finally, that when you think of um, recovery and so forth, you've got to think of the integration of all these together. So the formula is psychotherapy, nutrition, leaving off detrimental products, sleep, exercise, and mindfulness.